Hi, this is Fritz Onion with Pluralsight. In this module, we're going to be looking at the deployment of our ASP.NET 4 web applications. Until now, we focused on working within the development environment and testing against a development server. The final step is, of course, to push your application out to a live server and make it accessible to the world. We're going to start with a look at what is actually involved with deploying your application, and we're going to do it by hand to give you a feel for what really has to happen as you push an application from your development machine or perhaps a staging machine to a live server. And then we'll take a look at tools to help you with this process. The, the tool of preference today is something called Web Deploy. It's built on top of the MS Build tool, and it uh, takes into account all of the things you need to think about as you're deploying your application, and it manages most of those details for you. So it's a real welcome addition to the uh, deployment model. We'll also take a look at configuration files. This is one of the things that you have to think about when you deploy your applications. Uh, you very often change the compilation mode or the database connection strings that you have stored in your configuration file. And we'll take a look at a technology called XDT, which lets you transform a configuration file as you are doing the deployment of your application. So the first step in deploying your application is, of course, to prepare the web server that you plan to deploy to. Now, the web server um, you may be deploying to could be already set up. It could be an internet service provider. Um, but it's also useful for you to understand what is involved with setting up the server so you can test it locally before you actually try to push it out to um, a live server. Uh, until now, we've been using either IS Express or the Visual Studio development server. And that's just a little application that runs locally, and it runs under your identity. And uh, you'll often find that some things that you do in the development server or in IIS Express will not propagate directly to IIS because of uh, security issues. Uh, the IIS identity is always going to run under a distinct identity uh, that is probably not your own. So you may run into a couple of surprises when you first try deploying to IIS. So before you even consider deploying to a live site, I'd highly recommend that you install IIS on your local machine and try deploying your application just to your local IIS instance to make sure that you can uh, flush out any details that uh, should be taken care of before you push it to a live site. Now IIS is available in most versions of Windows. Uh, it's off by default. So if you want to test locally on your development machine, you will have to go in and enable IIS in the Windows Features panel and um, make sure you turn on ASP.NET as well. So we'll take a look at doing that next. So here we are in a virtual PC with a fresh installation of Visual Studio Web Express. And what I'm going to do is uh, enable IIS so we can test locally in a deployment scenario. Now, uh, you'll find the installation for IIS is just one of the Windows features available under Programs. So if you go into Turn Windows Features On and Off in your control panel, you should see a checkbox called Internet Information Services. And the important thing you want to check here, you want to verify, is that under World Wide Web Services, ASP.NET, or Application Development Features, ASP.NET has been checked. Uh, if you do that, it will bring in a bunch of dependencies necessary for that to work properly, and you should be good to go. So I'm already configured here, uh, and we should be ready to test. <clears throat> One thing I do want to point out, though, is that if you enable IIS after you've installed ASP.NET, which you probably installed when you installed Visual Studio Web Express, um, you want to make sure that ASP.NET is properly integrated with um, IIS. And to do that, bring up a command shell with administrative priv privileges. I'm going to use PowerShell just because it's my favorite command shell environment. And uh, navigate to the Windows directory and then navigate into Microsoft.NET Framework version 4. And in here, uh, if you look 
for everything that begins with ASP and ends with EXE, you'll find a utility called ASP.NET or ASP.NET Reg IIS, and that's the utility that will install IIS, install ASP.NET into IIS, and make sure that all of the uh, modules and handlers are properly configured. Um, so let's go ASP.NET underscore Reg IIS dot EXE, and do a dash I to install. Like so. And that will just, uh, like I said, make sure that ASP.NET is properly configured in your IIS installation. Okay, at this point we have an, uh, we should have IIS ready to go. And uh, you can either find it just by typing internet in your search programs, or it's also under the administrative tools section. And if we bring that up, um, you notice we can drill into uh, application pools and sites and some other things. So we'll take a look at that in more detail in a minute, but I just wanted to show you how to get IIS configured on your local machine so you can prepare for deployment testing. Now that we have IIS properly configured in our machine, uh, let's go ahead and try deploying a web application to our local IIS server. Now I have one, I have a little application that I've put together here. Uh, it looks very much like one we saw earlier in the course using the membership features of ASP.NET to add login capabilities. So let me just go ahead and run this. And we just have some content on the front page here. We have an about page and we have the ability to log in. And I've created a user account called Bob with a password of P at sign SSW0RD, if you're following along. And now just, uh, notice now that we are logged in as Bob. So what I'd like to do is try to get this deployed to our local IIS server and see if we can access it um, through there. So currently we're going through the ASP.NET development server. Let's uh, switch that out. So let's go take a look at what IIS is doing. So the uh, root directory where IIS is installed is under inetpub www root. And in fact, if you go to a browser and just browse to local host after you install IIS, you should see that IIS 7 uh, banner that is dropped in there by default for you. So what I'm going to do is just add a, um, an application below the root URL for the IIS server. And to do that, I'm just going to create a directory within here and populate it with the contents of my uh, application. So here's my application. This is what um, Visual Studio created for us. And let's just go ahead and try the really simple way of copying it over. So I'm going to hold the control key down and drag and drop it into here. And there we go. Now we have a test app sitting up in the root, uh, ready to go. So let's go try configuring this with IIS now. So if we bring up IIS and navigate into the default website, there's our directory. But what we need to do now is actually create an application on top of that directory so that we can surface it through the URL. So I'm going to add an application, call it test app. Notice we have an option to select a def uh, an application pool, which we'll talk about in a minute. And the physical path is just going to be that one we dropped it into. So that was inetpub, www root, test app. Now you could place this in another location on your disk. You don't, you're not required to put it under www root. Um, however, uh, the security settings are already configured to grant read access and such to IIS under this directory. Um, so if you do it outside of, of this directory, you may have to tweak the security uh, settings in the directory structure. All right, and let's go ahead and try browsing to it. Now that we have it configured, let's just verify that we got the right directory. Looks good. Browse to the site. And that will cause ASP.NET to compile it for the first time. <clears throat> and notice now we, the URL is pointing to localhost test app. And if, I, if this machine, uh, machine were exposed on the internet, 
This would be going over port 80, and this would be my machine name or IP address, and that would be uh, available to external clients as well. Let's try logging in as Bob like we did before. Okay, so we're running into our first problem with the deploying to IIS, and in this case, um, it's having trouble with that local database, the one that we auto-generated inside of the app data directory, which is the default model used by the membership API in ASP.NET. So next, we're going to take a look at things you often have to do after you deploy to a uh, local IIS installation. Now, the reason we encountered an error when we tried to access the login database uh, with our newly deployed site to IIS is that we're no longer running under our identity. And the way you can find out what identity your application is running under is by finding out which application pool it's running within. And you can find that just by going to your application within IIS, looking at the basic settings, and it will describe right here what application pool it's running in. And application pools are mapping onto processes, worker processes within IIS that determine the identity and, and security rights of a given, uh, given application. Uh, here are all the different app pools that are available. Now, in our case, the issue was the um, user profile was not loaded for the account, and that's something that SQL Server Express uh, depends on for locating uh, its, its database instances. So if we go and look at the identity, the application pool we are running under, default app pool, and go to uh, basic settings. You'll see the name and the framework version. But if you go to advanced settings, we'll find a setting in here called load user profile, which defaults to false. So we can, we can fix these, this particular error in our scenario by switching the load user profile to true, and that should make SQL Express happy. Now, I, I, I would like to point out here that if you're deploying to a live server, it's very likely that you'll have a uh, full version of SQL Server available to you there uh, if it's a real web server. And this would not be an issue in that scenario. Um, but if you do happen to be trying to deploy locally for testing within uh, IIS, uh, this is a nice little trick to remember that you need to switch the identity uh, or change this attribute in the application pool. One other important thing to note is that the identity under which this process runs, notice it's set to application pool identity. That's an identity that, that is um, uniquely generated for each application pool. And the way you refer to it is with IIS app pool, and then the name of the app pool. So default app pool is, is what this one would be. So that's the um, uh, security identity that you could use to grant access or grant privileges to the process that was hosting your application. Okay, so let's just try going back and launching our site again. And let's verify that we can log in and we have access to the database now. So Bob with our password. And now Bob is successfully logged in. So that was a deployment to the local IIS installation. And all we did to deploy was copy the files. Right? And, and uh, at its simplest, that's really what it's about. Uh, we did encounter a minor issue, which was how is the SQL Server going to be configured on the deployed machine? And that's something we do need to think about. Um, two things that come up very often are uh, you know, the, the database deployment, the configuration file deployment, as well as um, security issues with access to files in the machine. So those three things are issues that often crop up in deployment that you need to be ready to deal with.